I'm starting the recording right now. This is the lecture for Design 350 on Tuesday, December 8th. That means it's the penultimate lecture of the semester. It means there's one more left, and that lecture is on Thursday, and then we go into final exams. So let's take a look and see what's coming up as far as due dates. We've got a due date on the 10th, which is your complete portfolio submittal. So you have today, tomorrow, and Thursday to complete your portfolio submittal. It is due at 11.59 p.m. The requirements are listed, and I'm going to go over those in a moment. And uh, I gave you a template, although you do not have to use it. And then I'm putting in a reminder about the final exam. Here is another reminder. So it should show up on your calendar. Uh, the final exam you may take any time in final exam. You can take it now if you want, actually. Uh, but it's due any time in the final exam week. <clears throat> no later than December 17th at 11.59 p.m. You get a zero and you go down one letter grade if you do not submit something by that time. Um, and so uh, we've got some requirements and I'll go over them in a little while. Um, and it's, it should be fairly straightforward and fairly simple. I would like you to record your screen if, if at all possible. I'd like that mostly so that I can see how things get done and it helps me understand um, uh, better teaching skills for next time that I need to teach it if I see a systematic difference um, from best practices as people are doing things. So, so that's what's coming up. There's two more things due. There is the complete portfolio and the final exam. So woohoo, you guys are just about done. So that's really cool. So what are we doing today? <clears throat> I'm going to go over your portfolio submittal requirements, show you the link to the portfolio. I've got some tricks and suggestions on how to work to put this all together into one if you want. Um, I should add in here SNP. But that, uh, you pretty much know how to do. <clears throat> if you don't know how to cut and paste by now, um, our program is seriously uh, having problems uh, because you should know how to do that. So, But here's some, some good information for you. I'll go over the final exam. I have posted that information so that you've got it. You can practice it you can do it if you're happy with it you can turn it in i also have a sample utility calculation to run um natalia was asking some questions about her project and i i thought it would be good just to show you the process that i go through because her questions were specific to a specific site design Whereas the calculations we did in the land planning were very general. It's like, I don't know what size building. I don't know how many people. I'm just going to have to take a guess, and I'm going to guess to the high side. And I'd like to show some samples of your work because um, I'll tell you, I'm super impressed with a lot of the work. A lot of the work has just really, really, really impressed me. And, and that makes me happy. Like I said, this is my favorite time of the year because I'm, I'm not trying to cram stuff into students' brains. I'm seeing great work come out instead. So I think that's really, really cool stuff. Um, okay, so let's, let's start going through here. Final portfolio requirements. I've got, them all, I got all sorts of stuff up, up here. Uh, there's the submittal. There it is right there. Final portfolio submittal. So you're going to combine all your submittals into one file. 
Okay, and so here's how you can do that. Okay, there's a little video right here. How to combine multiple PDFs into one. And it's a cool little video. You don't have to watch it now, but you can see it. Uh, or you can cut and paste stuff into this portfolio template. Okay, and use that as a method of organizing. You don't have to use this particular template. This number of pages, you can add pages, you can subtract pages, but this will allow you to cut and paste items into place. And if you need to split up a PDF, if you want to most of a PDF, um, yeah, and, and Benjamin says, I just go on to Adobe on VMware to combine PDFs. And that's cool. However, we do know that uh, VMware occasionally isn't operating. Um, and so these ones are like the most popular, most standard. There's like Mergy, um, and Apples have it native inside of it. But there's some really nice, easy sites that don't have a million download this, touch this, uh, order that. So we vetted a couple of sites that allow you to do it. Um, so so that's kind of cool. But yeah, um, those are all kind of kind of cool ones. Um, and so and, and you can look at those and see they're actually. They're, they're sort of vetted by um, our professionals that do this professionally. So these ones are, are used by our professionals that usually use Adobe, but um, know that every now and then they're on a computer without Adobe. And so you can see which ones get used there. Um, so there you go. Um, it's pretty straightforward. That's your portfolio submittal. I think last week you saw that Laura had uh, put one on that, uh, that we could look at. And I thought that was an excellent example. Some of you others might have other examples to show. Maybe on Thursday we can have it be our show off your portfolio day. Um, submit your PDF. And you should include links to your original work or folders that show the original work. And mostly that's so that you can go back and get it when somebody asks you about it in a job interview. Okay, I'm not going to go in and check your work. I've already checked your work. I'm already satisfied that you're all doing excellent work. And so it's really not for me. It's for you in the future. Where was that? Where did I find that? What class? Where, where was that? And so that you can get back to it. And you might even go back to it and make it better or modify it or change it in some way, even just the presentation, to match what's needed in a job description. Okay? So there we go. That's That's about your final portfolio. Uh, let's see. Uh, so let me read that again. Submitted your portfolio and I didn't link in the comment. I, uh, that's, a, oh, oh, you put the link in the comment. Um, and that's okay too, except that, and that's fine. Um, if you don't have it on there, it's not a super... It, it's, I'm not grading you on that. This is a suggestion. Um, and just you might want to go back and put that on your thing for your own use. Um, if, if, you, if you put the link into the comment section, that's great, but you won't have access to that once the course turns off. Um, right now you could always go back to your grades, click on it, you've got it. But as soon as your this course turns off for your um, access to it, then that's it. Um, so it's just best to put that link somewhere on your portfolio where you can get it. And it's a best practice. It's not a requirement. 
So your grading is on completeness. Did you touch each of the things that and demonstrate the student learning outcomes of each of the things that are asked for in the class? Are your drawings technically accurate? Have you made an attempt for visual clarity and a pleasing presentation? That's in the eyes beholder. Um, if you've, you know, I don't want to see slop and misspellings and things all over the place. And, and everybody so far has presented in a way that will get full points on this. So don't worry about that too much. And then um, for going beyond the absolute minimum, <laughs> you get a point. If you did the absolute minimum, you got one drawing of topos, one drawing of this, one example of this, and one example of that, and it doesn't really show the scope of the work that we, show, that we did in this class, I'll deduct some. I think from what I've seen, almost everybody... Uh, has been doing this and the, and the only people that haven't been able to do it are, are people that have had some sort of a technical or uh, family fiasco hit them and uh, and you just need more time, which I have given to those that need it. Uh, so don't worry about this too much. I think everybody, if you present the work that I've seen so far, you've got a four out of four. Or maybe even more. There's a few people that I've been so impressed with what you've done. It's so far above what we're asking for that I'm just throwing points in there. Uh, and it doesn't matter because you've all gotten A already. Anyway, if, you, if you're getting that, but it's just kind of fun. I like to do that. Okay, so there's your final portfolio work. Um, let's look at, uh, and I showed you the portfolio template. I went over these little tricks. Here's how to combine multiple PDFs. Good ways to split a PDF. And you'll note on these that we've made uh, a little segment for um, Mac, a little segment for Firefox, and a little segment for Chrome. We didn't do one for whatever the Microsoft one is. I don't even know what that's called right now. Let's see what it's called. Um, Microsoft Edge. I understand that Microsoft is actually trying to make Edge useful, which their Microsoft browser has not been useful for the last 10 to 15 years. Um, it could be that we have to start thinking about Microsoft Edge in the short near future, but right now we left it off. You'll see... <laughs> You'll see, really, we wanted to make sure that we had somebody who could work on a Chromebook, somebody who has a good laptop or a good computer that likes to use Firefox, and, of course, Mac users. Okay, uh, how to combine Google Slides. I demonstrated that the other day, but I'm going to do it again right here. First, I'm going to show you how to get rid of stuff. Shift, left click, and... Delete slides. Where's delete? There we go. So here, I've got I've got a single presentation, okay, and I've and I just want to combine a bunch of my other Google presentations. Now, some of you might have been doing this in Google presentation, and so you can do that. You can go here, and I can say I want that sheet. I'm going to hold the control button down and say I want that sheet and that sheet. And I will now right click, copy, and paste. So there we go. Okay, right click, copy, and paste. So that's how I, that's how I, and I can see all this stuff that comes up. It's kind of cool. You get to answer all those questions. Okay, and then I can do that with another. Here's here's the one I like to demonstrate with. I'm going to put all of this in. Right-click, copy. Right-click, paste. And what I like about this is, of course, these are what 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 belongs here in an office. Okay, let's see. So, um, come on, get out of there, get out of. I God, I hate it when they put 
junk on here that I don't want. Get out of there. Jeez Louise. Okay, so this is just a fun little thing. What belongs on an office desk? Well, that one does, and that one does, and that one does, and that one does. And, of course, these belong in your lunchbox. Okay, but what I like about this is these are still movable, but over here, they're, they're left in their identical condition. So I like to use this combined thing. Uh, for those of you who use DWFs, I'm not sure if any of you use DWF, but DWF is a great way to... Um, Put PDFs together. Let me see if I can open my DWF viewer. I'm not sure I've got it on this computer handy. Uh, let me look and see. DWF. I actually don't have it on this. Oh, there it is. DWF computer. Nope. I don't. I don't have it on. Uh, I don't have a DWF on this computer. Oh yeah, there it is, right there. I do have it. So I'm gonna show you how to put PDFs in there, which is really kind of cool. Okay, so if I've got a set of PDFs, I can actually just drag them right in. Oops, I gotta grab my PDF. And I just... <laughs> Oops, I did that in Mark. I need to put that into here. Click. I know I can do that. There it is. And now I've got all those pages of the PDF in here. And I can I can delete certain pages if I want. This is a really great tool if you've got it uh, for combining and editing PDFs and things like that. And you can do markups right here in it if you want, right? You can... You can do your markups. Uh, you can do freehand scribbles, all that kind of stuff. This is a really, it's actually a pretty good tool uh, to use if you want. So that's DWF. And then to convert it all into a PDF again, it's just print or save as. Uh, save as, you know, I guess I have to print it to a PDF print as a PDF okay and then I can print that whole thing so there's another little trick that you can use if you feel like it so I should put on here to use the DWF viewer Yep. So those are all things that you can use. You may have any questions on your portfolio really quickly before we go on to uh, talking about the final exam. Everybody doing okay with it? Uh, any, any significant questions I'm looking for? There we go. Yeah. And so, so a couple of people say they've turned it in already. Shoot, I didn't see it. Let me see if I can find final exam. Where uh, now? I have to go back and find it. Um, I guess I'll I'll find it through here. Uh, there we go. That's cool. Um, no, so um, <laughs> there it is. How cool is it? can can uh, Benjamin, can I show it to people? Is it okay if I show it? Oh, you're saying it's not that great. I bet you it is. So this is awesome. Here we go. Um, so, so these are your SLOs. There we go. Student learning outcomes. Oh, this looks great. That's exactly what I'm looking for. This shows all of the types of plot plans that we did one of each type that's excellent here's a bunch of the topo drawings 
That's excellent. That shows it very well. Here's your land planning document that you submitted. And yours was very nicely done. It's exactly... No, this is excellent. Uh, oh, look at that. You even got some screenshots of your... Um, of your thing, so that's kind of cool. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, Kara, I needed to do yours really quickly. Yes, I remember that. I'm going to uh, do yours and show you how to get a good screenshot. Uh, and here we go. So this is really nice. So thank you, Kara, for reminding me. Uh, I'm going to go find your file because you sent it to me. I think. Did you send it to me or did you just submit it, Kara? Here it is. Um, okay, I'm opening it up now. And how do you get a good screenshot? So Kara has a hard time getting a screenshot because her file is on... Uh, a C size drawing. What is that? 17 by 21 or something like that, right, Kara? And so you can see that to get a screenshot, are you guys able to see what I've got going here? So so here's Kara's, and this is awesome work, I'm telling you. You go like this and you go, oh my gosh, this is just incredible. The amount of work and the detail and all that kind of stuff. Now, there's one thing I will say is that you made, if I take, uh, if I look at one of these and look at the properties, your your height is pretty small and it's on a C size. And I get it. You're getting everything to fit. Okay. Sometimes that's just, and, and yes, I'll check yours too, Hassan. Um, and so... I would normally make these almost twice as big, 0.09, if you have an opportunity to. Because even when this is printed full size on a C-sized piece of paper, that's going to be hard to do. But here's how I would tend to do this. First of all, I would take the snip of this whole thing. So I'm going to take a snip of the main portion of your work and maybe I'll even catch the whole thing here and let's put that now onto uh, my portfolio page here so there it is so there I've I've got it and I'll put it in the middle now I want to maybe call out two or three things. So I'll take a larger snip in a few areas and I'll arrange them around. And that's perfectly acceptable to do. So let's say I'm really interested in showing, this is one of the small units, right? This is, and, and you even have um, a floor plan for this accessory building. But now you can see I've got this big, okay? And so I'll take a snip of just this and I'll put that on there. So that's how I would go about doing it. And get it at a size that you can see. And then I just I just draw some sort of a bubble. Um, can I I think somewhere in here there's a bubble. Here's a bubble. So I'd make that bubble, and I would make the border red or something that stands out, and maybe a three, and I would go transparent, and then I would just draw a little line over to it. and make that maybe a red line also. So that somebody can see some details. Okay, so, um, and, and, and I'll tell you, it's just, 
uh, like I said, everybody did such really, really cool work. Um, so that's how I would do that. And you could even have multiple pages if there's a bunch of stuff you want to show. Because I know you've got this cool, like, a common parking area, which is really nice. It goes with the accessory building. Um, you just put a ton and ton of stuff into here. Uh, so very, very nice work. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, and Kara, that, that was auto, well, Kara, did you do that in AutoCAD or did you do it in Dynascape? I know that when you submitted it, it was AutoCAD. Okay, so you did do it in AutoCAD. So that's, uh, that's really, really cool. Where did you get your library of plants? Do you already have that? built up on your own or did you get one off of the web or did you pull them out of Dynascape? Just checking to see. Okay, yeah. There's a there's a lot out there. So for those of you who are interested, um, you can you can send um well oh don't don't put that out there now. Wait until they send you a Starbucks card, Kara. You have to leverage your knowledge. Um, everybody should be sending you some sort of a, a holiday treat of some sort. Oh, yeah, too late. Darn. You're just too nice, that's all. Um, yeah, totally send a Starbucks card for that. Anyway, you guys, uh, I, I love it. You guys are really awesome. All right, so there we go. So that answers that question. Uh, Wasan, can, can I open yours up from, the, from your submittal? Is that okay? Okay. So let's look at Wasson's now. And I'll download it so that I can see it a little bit better than what's on here. Um, so here we go. And I guess I need to go a little bit smaller. So here's Wasson's. And so you used our template, did a little bit of nice background work. And this is really nice. Uh, you pulled these kind of like right off of there and what we're looking at. This looks really, really good. Uh, oh, beautiful. It's very, very nicely done. Somebody can see, oh, I see a number of different plot plans. That's really cool. And you've got uh, a sample of what they are. And here's link to original files. This is extremely well laid out. So this is, uh, this is very high quality work. Um, and some more of the, 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 more of the plot plans. So you've got all the different ones that we worked on. Um, and then section, uh, more of these where you've got, uh, this looks really nice. Wow, did we do all this? Wow, we did. You did, I think you did everything. <laughs> you did every single one of these. That's really cool. And then we've got the topo drawings and showing the calculations from the topo drawings. And the little definition that we've got. This is very, very nice showing. And this is, uh, again, it's some Revit. Telling what we mean. And this is actually a really good thing to add in there. When I say for our purposes. Because, you know, different offices. Uh, yeah, I was hardcore. Yeah, that's what every, you know what? If you, if you read, uh, what is it? It used to be called Pick a Prop, but now it's RateMyProfessor.com. They got sued um, because they were actually pulling data out of schools. And they got sued, and rather than go through the suit, they stopped doing that and uh, changed their name, RateMyProfessor.com. And if you look on that, I tend to think that uh, I'm very happy with what people say. They say I'm extremely extremely hard because I give so much work but that everybody seems to catch a break and get an A if you just really try hard a lot of work means different things to different people you know um, we all know people that have family emergencies due to everything and now with COVID they have more family emergencies and more I uh, I was at um, a very cool presentation to all the faculty and uh, there was a, a woman who was dyslexic 
She worked her hiney off all through school. She became a professor, a PhD, and she taught at American River College. And she said the thing that just fried her the most, that she just wanted to throttle people. They just said, oh, you need to learn how to work smarter, not harder. Or, you know, it just takes a little bit more hard work. And she goes, she goes, nobody knows what hard work is until they've worked like me. You just can't see it because I'm good at it. And, and that, I really took that to heart. <laughs> so everybody has a level of hard work. I believe that everybody does work hard. Um, and it's our job to be able to see that hard work um, that other people are doing. And not just relate it exactly to how I do hard work. So um, uh, I think all of it, but this is beautiful work. <laughs> this is beautiful work. Um, so, uh, but you know what, Wasan, I'm going to tell a story about you. Sorry about this. But uh, Wasan has always jumped in and done things that she doesn't know how to do and ends up being really good at it. So it was a year and a half ago and Wasan was looking to do something cool, and we had this project called the Moon Rover Project at the Aerospace Museum, and we were looking for people to help other people do the VR experience. And Wasan had never done VR, never done any of that, and she goes, I'll do that. And I'm telling you, more people, Wasan helped more people work that VR system and she had never done it before and she just went out and learned how to do it and and it was great because people would just they would all come up to Wasson there'd be this other guy standing there another person I don't know why it was but everybody walked up to Wasson and said okay what do I do next and so Wasson has always been one of those ones that just sort of like yeah I'll try that and so it, it kind of shows, always doing some cool new stuff. Look at this. Look at this beautiful work. So, Wasan, this is excellent work. Um, wow, look at that. You even have all of the land planning document. That is so cool. I'm going to have to show this to Gary uh, Aguilar because, you know, I am a mechanical engineer. Um, <laughs> and a mechanical engineer teaching... You guys always make me look good. So I'm going to tell you something that I, another thing that I told um, our interns um, at our last, our last meeting yesterday. I had an engineering mentor uh, when I went to uh, work for Wemco. I got hired as the R&D supervisor as a junior engineer. I'd had like four years of field experience by that time. And uh, I got there, and the first thing that my boss did was sat me down and said, okay, here's the labor contract. Read it. Make sure you understand it and never violate it. I go, okay, that's cool. So I spent a few days reading it and understanding it, and he goes, okay, here's a Hydraulic Institute manual. This is how everything works. We do everything according to this manual. Read it, learn it, make sure that we do it. That's your only job. Okay. So after about a week, week and a half, uh, sat, he sat me down and he said, okay, you're ready to go out and supervise. Now here's your job. Shut up, get out of the way, let them work. They know more than you do. And of course, you know, this was, this, these were the journey level craftsmen that were out there working. And he goes, he goes, Get out of the way. Let them work. They'll do great work. And he was absolutely right. I learned more from that crew than anybody I've ever worked with in my life. And, um, and it was very, very cool. And, and I try to take that on. So I actually learned from you guys more. I just try to get out of your way and let you do good work. This is really cool. This is really, really, really cool. That's showing it. That is really awesome. Um, and, I, and I love the fact that we got to do... So oh, by the way, uh, it looks so... Um, it looks um, like uh, we do have support so that uh, when 
the college opens up for outdoor work, uh, we will have an opportunity to put a little boot camp together um, for you to operate the survey equipment. So there we go. This is really, really nice. Uh, cool stuff. Oh, yeah. And look at this. It looks like you must have talked to the landscapers or seen what they were doing because I certainly have never taught people how to do this kind of stuff. Um, and this was the, the landscape work that, that went along with it. So very, very cool. I'll give you a couple extra points. There it is in Revit also. So that is a, that's a really cool one. Um, and so there we, and there'll be some more. I've got some more examples to show up here also. Uh, but I do want to go over the final exam really quickly. Particularly, I want, uh, I think, I don't remember who all did. I think it was Renulfo and, and Ayub, um, but maybe somebody else too. I want to be able to show you the, uh, what to do in Minecraft and make sure that you can do it. But I have published it. I'm sorry. I was supposed to do it on the 7th, but I did it this morning. So here, here are your final exam requirements. You pick one of these, one of these. And for those of you who did the SACOG and the CCNRs, um, I'm trying to think. I believe Michelle did one. I believe Robert Benjamin did one. I don't remember who else. Uh, that's what happens when you get over 30, and I'm twice that now. So, um, so that's, uh, that's, uh, yeah, Benjamin, you did one. So if you feel like it, what you did was excellent. And, and you could reproduce something like that for this one. And and actually, Michelle, I think you did a solar one already. So this is almost, I picked this and then I think I saw, I think Michelle, you did a solar one. I've, I've got it up here somewhere. Um, yeah, there there's a nice, you know, did this cool solar review and everything. It's like, wow. So Michelle, uh, you can almost just, almost write just the CCNR that goes with yours. Um, but what I'm talking about is, and you don't have to design this really. You just have to kind of show where you would put it. A 16 kilowatt solar power field. So in this case, I'm thinking... Um, that it's not on top of the buildings. Michelle, you put yours on top of the buildings. If you feel like just saying, hey, mine are already there on top of the houses. I'm going to leave them there. I'll totally accept that because then it goes along with your work and you, you've sort of got it done, but I don't. I think you wrote the SACOG or the work, but not the CCNR. Uh, and it, remember, it, it's the ground rules. It's not the CC. It doesn't have to be legalese. It's the ground rules. Should be quick and simple and show where it's located on the plot. And I'm interested in the installation, the maintenance. Remember, this has to be sustainable. It has to keep lasting. What happens in 15 years when it doesn't work or in 10 years where there's a new type of battery system or when, when, when? And most importantly, how is the power distributed? Who gets what? Is it by per square foot that you built? You get that percentage of it off of your bill. Uh, is it equal per lot regardless of how much you've used? How is it going to work? Um, and those ground rules would be really interesting to, to see. Okay? And then you would, ha you would hire a management company to manage that agreement in the CCNR. So that's that's final exam number one. Very straightforward and simple for those of you who did work in that arena. Um, on the second option, let's talk about the second option. Collect data and draw. 
record the work in each step in the test and also in the game. If you can make some small either, you don't have to be recording while you're in the game, but certainly take some screenshots like you just did. I'd want to see a screenshot of at least one pole on the corner of the building. So let's talk about that. Uh, survey skill demonstration would be collect data and draw. And so it's the ARC survey simulation environment. The small rectangular building that's now on the site. So if I go to the site, which I don't think I have open. And, and I'm not, I don't care how you do it. Uh, you could do it with, here it is. It's this building. It's this little rectangular build. There's the big main building that looks like the DT100 building. And here's the little rectangular building. So what I'm talking about, I'm going to get a little closer. is something there and then just make sure you're close right that's close enough if I, you know if you want to get a little closer that's cool but there's the xyz i'd want at least a screenshot okay and yeah there's just four there's four corners to this thing so you got four spots to take there's another one and and, and look, everybody's going to be a little different because where are you taking it, right? Which corner are you taking it? I just, uh, I'm going to know how close you are and then you're just going to draw it. So there it is, those four, those four points. Draw, yeah, it is, it's supposed to be easy. Wasson says that's easy. And it's just the small building. So Renolfo asked, do we measure the small building or both? It is just the small building. Okay. Um, and so there you go. That's a that's a cool a cool one. So there's four points. Uh, put it on your survey record. And then what you'll do is take your um, take what take the drawing you've already done of the lot and Add those four points in in the right spot and note the elevation. Okay. So there. Yeah. AutoCAD is easy or you can put um, a building pad in if you did it in Revit. Not, I don't really care how you do it. Okay. So that's number two. And number three is again, read data and it says build and it's not build. It should say draw. Read and draw. Sorry. I don't know why I put down build. I was... Read data and draw. So access to Minecraft world. I'm going to show it to you in a minute. I have a hosting join code here. And I'm going to try to leave it on. And if you try to get in and it won't let you in, just send me send me a, a link and I'll I'll get you back into it. Um, if anything happens that my Minecraft turns off, then I got to send you a new code. Okay, there's eight columns, and just draw it and put the southwesterly, the most southwesterly coordinate at zero 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 on your drawing. Okay, so that's the smallest x and uh, and the smallest y type thing, okay, at 0, 0, 0. So you TP to 900, 100, 800, and look for the marker columns. And what you'll see – come on, why can't I go up? There we go. There's a site, and, and, and you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight columns, 
and you're just going to get the coordinates of the base of each column and draw it. <laughs> Put it into a survey record and draw it. So there it is. And you can get a record of yourself doing it. You can take either take a, a, a camera shot of this. There. Just something like that is good enough. And then show do the screen record of you doing the drawing. So one of those three things, one of those three things is, oops. Uh, okay, escape, escape, escape. Why can't I get out of here? There we go, save and exit. Oh, I can't save and exit. <laughs> if I save and exit, then... Uh, then you can't get into it anymore. I have to remember that. Okay. Timing. Assignments are posted now. There they are. Anytime. Up till Thursday the 17th. I will accept early postings. If you want, you can post and put in the thing. Can you just please check to make sure that I am complete? Complete. And then I'll say that. Uh, I'll say yes or no, you are complete. And if it is complete, I'll probably, um, yeah, Benjamin, let's see. So I've got, uh, I'm going to make sure I caught all of these. How many? Da, da, da. Uh, so Benjamin asks, if we use a site previously, we can use you say the same drawing. Yes, yes. Whether you did it in AutoCAD or you did it in Revit, you're just adding the four points basically to what we've done there. Um, auto, uh, okay. For the final portfolio for the learning app, I pulled the brief sense that you wrote on the canvas for each module. Will that work? Yes, that will work. That so. Uh, Laura asks if you can just use what we wrote for each module, and yes, that will be fine. Um, so there we go. Uh, your own original work on your own schedule. There aren't really any samples. What I just went through is what I'm what you've got. Please submit all associated files. So if you've got a rev and, and I'd like a PDF of it, right? Um, I'm not sure I wrote that down. Um, uh, some formats are, oh, and, oh, it says in here what I want them in. Well, it doesn't. I'll go back. I'll go back and give you the format, but um, PDFs and stuff should work fine. Yeah. Yeah, and all you need is a rectangle that says solar field here. So pretty, you know, figure out how big 16 kilowatts is, right? How many square feet? You can do that from many square feet of solar panel makes 16 kilowatts. Calculate, calculate, you know, got all, how many solar panels do I need? How many solar panels? 16 kilowatts. Duh, 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 and you can just, you can just go to, how many square feet? How many solar panels? 63 panels. So, is 15 kilowatts. So, you can figure it out right from there. Or you can just use this, 63 solar panels. Um... Which is fairly big, but it's not that big, right? So yeah, so for the for what you would do on your drawing, you would just take one of your drawings, um, 
Really? Does the doctor talk about 16 kilowatts? That, that, I, okay, so here's some extra credit. If you find a clip of where the doctor says 16 kilowatts of, of power um, and, and add it to here, uh, you get an extra four points. Okay, so there you go. That, that's, uh, that's cool knowledge if it's true. Um, I like that. Okay. Um, so there we go. So that's a bunch of cool, cool stuff. Um, final example. Okay, so another thing I wanted to do, here is a video for a utility calculation. And Natalia has done some excellent work also. Um, and what she's got, let me just call up the Jamboard to show you one sheet. So as an example, here's a part of one sheet that uh, Natalia has where you can see that she's going to put some greenhouses here for hydroponics. I don't know exactly how big they are. Who knows? You could spread them out out here too, but here's, here's some cool stuff. But um, the question then is, how much power do you need to run those? And uh, can you get it off the solar power plant? How do you, how do you, how do you get that? How, how do you, how do you do that? And so I made up a little spreadsheet and I went over this kind of and, uh, but here I've got for you the actual spreadsheet. So let's take a look at it really quick and, and see how to work it. So now this is different. Oh, 1.8 gigawatts. Okay. Um, yeah, and I still love that movie. I do watch it now and then. Um, uh, it's just a great, uh, yeah, the clock tower. Yep. Um, and so um, here we go. Here's how we would do one of these. Now in... Um, in our land planning thing, we didn't have any details. We had no design details in our brain. So we had to be very, very general. So we just said, okay, what what are we going to need under the road? Now, in this case, you're going to want to be more specific. You're going to know that there's cooling. Let me bold it. There's heating. There's lighting. And maybe there's other things. And you'll come up with... Uh, total power loads for each one okay and if it's all going to be electric i'll change this btu to electric but you might have a gas one for heating that's pretty common so in these cases i put some information in that maybe i need and maybe i don't need how much glass area am i going to have and what's the volume so when I did the volume, I just said, oh, it's 40 by 25 by 10. I don't know. You figure them out. Um, and and you, you'll just measure what you want, and that will give you a volume. The reason I wanted a volume is I found a thing that said that your volume pretty much equals your CFM. Okay, cubic feet per minute of venting air for every 10 degrees of cooling that you want. So if it's 100 degrees outside and you need to keep it at 90 in your greenhouse, you'll need one CFM for every cubic foot that you're trying to ventilate. Okay, so in this case, I said, okay, well, I need a whatever is there. I need right there. So I just said, okay, I'll make it equal. And then I found another thing that says, all right, I found a fan that will give me 10,000 CFM. I just looked around for one. I go, oh, oh, look at that. It's even 12,000 CFM. 
So it'll be okay. And it's one half horsepower. Okay. And, and look, so, you know, it depends on how hard it's working and how much pressure it has. Blah, 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 blah. So there's nothing really big. Max ambient temperature, 104 degrees. So you look at this stuff, you go, okay, that's, I, I want to put that fan in there. You just kind of dink around till you find one. So now I found horsepower. And how many kW is horsepower? Horsepower divided by 1.3. Okay, but I don't like to, to that would be 0.3842176, blah, blah, blah. So I really love Excel because it lets me, this says round up in chunks of 0.5. So 0.38 will round up to 0.5. How many greenhouses? Total KW. Man, that's not much more than a heavy-duty hair dryer. That's not bad. Okay, so your cooling costs may not be uh, all that bad. Okay, now, if you've got a swamp cooler and you want to do more and all that other kind of stuff, you'll add that in. Okay, I need to pump some water. How much will that be? I need to do this. So you'll just take each thing and add it up. For lighting, it's it, people don't talk very clearly. I don't know uh, why people don't use normal words very well. They make it so flipping hard to figure out. Their, their explanations on the web are terrible. A lighting, uh, a mechanical engineer would say, how many watts per square foot do you need in a greenhouse? Oh, greenhouses are always, you know, 1.5 watts per square foot or 2 watts per square foot or 3 watts per square foot. Well, I found one that, and this 10 watts per square foot is really high, but I found one and I back calculated it and that's if you're using pretty inefficient stuff. So I just dug around long enough that for a 10,000 square foot place, I would want 10 watts per square foot. And then I did, okay, um, how many square feet do I have? And then I know that there's, I don't need to have every square foot of it I really want the lights on the plants so this is what percentage of your area is plants and then divide by a thousand to get KW so each greenhouse will take 7.5 kilowatts that's seven hair dryers okay I've got three of those so it'll take me 22 KW so look, 16 kW is 63 panels. You might need 100 panels to run this place. That's still not a ton, right? People usually put eight or nine on top of their house. So that's not, that's not that, that much. So that's cooling. That's lighting. Let's look at heating. Heating again goes by volume and i looked at this greenhouse power calculator place this one did look pretty good and i just plugged some numbers in this number is way too big i think i had a humongous um temperature differential i don't know what you need but if you go to this site it's gonna give you you plug in the size and your low temperature and what you want to heat it to and it'll tell you how many BTU of heating you need. Well, in our country, a lot of places do use BTU, but all of this all of the heaters are rated in tons. And that's tons of ice that you can melt in 1 hour. Cuz that's a very fixed amount of energy to do that and it's a fixed amount of time 
So this number, BTU, divided by 12,000 are tons. Now, I, I look at that and I go, well, that's pretty big. Five tons is pretty big. Um, but, you know, um, it could potentially be much less depending on this number here. Five tons is probably like two to two and a half times what most people have in a home. So you would need 15 tons and you would just go and look whether it's gas or electric. You would go again like I did with the fan. You would go find one and find out how much power it uses. So that's how you go about figuring these things out. Just You, you got to kind of like step through it and look over it and figure it out. But now I've got a template for you that you could use, but you, you still have to do research. You have to find fans. You have to find, figure out areas. You have to figure out numbers. You have to figure out from this site um, what temperatures you're working at. So this is far more detailed than the one that we used before. If I, Maybe you need a pump. Okay, and maybe your your cool storage, cool storage, and and those you might just look up, say, oh, I just checked my pump, it it runs at uh, uh, two kW, and I looked at my cool storage, it's one point five kW. So that's how you that's how you figure all of those out. All right, wow. Uh, that was a lot. Let me see if there are any other things. Um, that looked good. Uh, oh, man. Okay. So I wanted to show a bunch of these. Uh, so we're done. But if you've got time, hang on the line and look at some of these cool things. I'm just going to show some. This was Xandria's. I've got it up here somewhere. Here's Xandria's. Um, also really cool. And Xandria used Village Homes in Davis as a model. And, of course, this is huge. This is many, many, many acres. And um, you would, uh, Winding Oaks would take a small amount of it. But look at how cool this is. It's It's got all sorts of, right? It's got the the maps. It's got what's there. And look at this cool community development where there's a beautiful community access area at the front and then each of these building pads, they're all very similar building pads just arranged differently and they're, they're sort of on a lot, on one part of a lot. The, when you look at um, village homes, you do get a small area that is assigned to you and you have rights to landscape as you want. But isn't that really cool uh, how, that, how that looks? And there's guest parking and resident parking and vegetable beds and bike parking and a greenhouse. And uh, I thought this, uh, I just, I was super impressed. And and then there's some there's some budget and maintenance and cost info that is essentially the CCNR boundaries. Uh, this one is Michelle's that uh, did a beautiful proposal right here about um, uh, the energy improvement. And look, I mean here is data. This is giving data, and I love having this. So this was the SACOG work that went along with what um, Michelle put together for how each of these would be set and, and, and what the, um, um, uh, solar energy sun path looks like. Uh, here's Laura's. Laura's was really cool also. It was a community use area and it was real interesting how how this developed where where this is and who's got access and how it can access so there was a lot of discussion 
about how this would actually work. But look at how nicely that community use area pops in there and and some schedules. Um, and, and here's the actual extension of it. And what I liked is um, getting some 3D off of SketchUp. Now, Laura found out that... Um, yeah, you guys are all, these are these are really cool, aren't they? Um, Laura found out that when you get a SketchUp model, you got to dink and dork with it a lot before it's useful. But now Laura has an AutoCAD file with all of these blocks in it that can be reused now, and they they do make some pretty quick, nice three D. Um, you know, this is just AutoCAD 3D that that these are popped into. And when you look at them, they're not really all that fancy from the point of view of models. But it really does give a nice feel, right? From a land planning point of view, um, I think the, the property owner would go, oh, I, I would like to go sit there. And I like where it is. Look, look at where it's sitting right here. It's sort of out of the way. I know there's a big area here. Uh, Laura, did you put a gate right here? I don't remember. Did you have access from... Did you have access from the... Um, from the church? No. Okay. So there, there was a... And we talked about that. Like, you know, do you need a fence... If not, uh, where do you post that this is not an open campground and who gets to come in and who doesn't get to come in and things like that. Um, so it's just kind of a really, really, really cool, um, really cool thing to, to put in there. Um, and then I think this, uh, this is uh, Benjamin's, right? And oh my gosh, he did such an excellent job of of putting in the background to to a SACOG uh, proposal about one why it's being proposed. The outcomes here are awesome. These are just excellent, excellent outcomes that are measurable. You actually could develop measurements for all of these or at least when I looked at it I saw that each of these could have a measurable outcome uh, that you could that you could devise that SACOG would want uh, barriers yep yeah, these are all uh, these are all barriers to overcome and so once you know the barriers you can start designing to address the barriers and just excellent work of uh, listing the listing the resources you know whenever you pull in big dogs that um, that people can go oh my gosh really that uh, all those people and and these are people that that are kind of known a little bit that really really works um, so this is really a really a, I wanted to, to pay attention to to what this is and and I like the idea behind it uh, Benjamin I don't remember because I didn't really look at it all the way through who has access to this is it just these four lot owners or do other people have access to I don't I don't remember from from your write-up uh, but look at how cool this looks and and here comes your good landscaping stuff again where we've got some really nice images that go along with it. Now, one person asked, uh, when do I use black and white and when do I use color? Oh, okay, good. So yours, yours is one of the ones that has the church option too. Um, that's really cool. But this obviously, because there are, are plants and things, you... These, these do belong in color, but this is a very appropriate use of color. If this whole thing right here was color, it would probably overpower it, and these would not jump out. 
So these are really nice because people can get the idea of what it looks like. And just look, I mean, um, this is just really, really cool of, of what this area looks like and how you put it together. And so a very, very, another very, very nice job. Uh, there's more. We'll go over more. I'll be looking at others. Uh, but these were the ones that got kind of got submitted and I had my hands on pretty, pretty quickly. So there, let's see. I think I made it through the whole list. Submittal requirements, portfolios, all of these, final exam info, till you can't, there we go. Any last questions before I turn the recording off? Okay, then I'm going, I'm turning.